which NFL trade will have the biggest impact? I don't exactly agree with NFL.com. I agree with the runner-up. It has to be Russell Wilson. Well, it has to be. No question. No, all right, and good. the reason I say this is very simple. The Cleveland Browns had a pretty good season with Baker Mayfield as a quarterback. Not last year. Okay, years ago. okay, there we go. The, the Cleveland Browns are pretty good. And you look at the Denver Broncos, last playoff appearance. Do we recall when that was? Um, the second longest drought in the National Football League behind the New York Jets. Mm. The Cleveland Browns were just in a playoff two years ago. The Cleveland Browns have a really good team that uh, <laughs> Deshaun Watson should help, but they're not starting where the Denver Broncos are starting from. To me, it's a no-brainer. Russell Wilson going to the Denver Broncos is by far and away the biggest offseason move. All he needs to do is go out there and play and validate what I'm saying right now. Mm. Mm. So, like, I get it. I like Russell Wilson. I don't know if they're going to go to the playoffs, though, but I like him because I think he might be the third or fourth best quarterback in that division. But we'll talk about that <laughs> later on. I think the most impactful trade will be Matt Ryan going to the Indianapolis mm. Colts mm. because the Indianapolis Colts would have been a playoff team with a solid quarterback. We're already hearing their guys in the building talk about Matt Ryan has brought a level of professionalism at quarterback that reminds them of what Peyton Manning used to do in terms of their preparation process. Now, when you look at Matt Ryan, some will say, oh, he's a system player. But remember, this is a guy that's been an MVP in the league. He doesn't necessarily need to put this team on his back. He just has to drive the car. And when you think about the running game with Jonathan Taylor, this big offensive line that they have, they do have Michael Pittman. They got a young guy that they're impressed with, Alec Pierce. And then this defense that should play lights out with Gus Bradley, I believe this team is going to be in the conversation, not only in the tournament, but a team that can do some damage when they get into the postseason. Ah, uh, both of you guys are wrong on this one, but I'm not mad at you. Um, when you want to talk about the biggest impact, there are several variables you have to respect. Let's start with the best player in terms of this conversation. So I just heard Matt Ryan. I just heard TJ say Russell Wilson. And I got somebody maybe better than both of those guys at the quarterback position, Deshaun Watson. NFL.com got it right, Deshaun Watson. Last time we checked on Deshaun Watson on the football field, 70% completion percentage, 112, not the group, 112 passer rating, and was out there tilting for 36 total touchdowns. Not coming off a suspect year of injury and maybe the system like a Russell Wilson, and certainly not Matt Ryan, who they said, we love you, but we don't love you enough to keep you. So now we're talking about the best player going to the Cleveland Browns. I don't know. Denver Broncos have a strong roster, respect. We know, obviously, when you talk about what Bucky is saying, they have a strong roster as well. But you know who has a great roster? Just needed one part, one piece, one thing? The Cleveland Browns. So the Cleveland Browns now have a huge piece in the middle of the impact that they can have. And you look at the Cleveland Browns last year, not making the playoffs. Cleveland Browns last year, their quarterback only won six games. And now they get Deshaun Watson. You know how that energizes you when you're saying only thing holding us back is that position? And then they fill that position with someone as talented, as great as Deshaun Watson? I think this was a no-brainer. NFL.com got it right. Deshaun Watson to the Browns. You go from Baker to Deshaun. Shoo! You go from Shoo! Carson Wentz to Matt Ryan. Or you go from... Teddy Bridgewater, Drew Locke to Russell Wilson. Shoo, shoo. <laughs> yeah. and, and so Denver, when, when you just look at number one, Denver hasn't been in the playoffs six seasons. Yeah, yeah. Defensively, with Vic Fangio, they were good. We, we don't know how that defense is going to be. Just what Ru Russell Wilson has won, won a Super Bowl, which, which we all know. Deshaun Watson is a fantastic quarterback but he hasn't reached the heights of where Russell Wilson has reached. And the Colts, they're a good football team. Matt Ryan mentally is a better player than Carson Wentz, but physically I don't think anybody would say, oh, man, Matt Ryan is such a huge upgrade over Carson. I just feel like mm. with Russell Wilson, with his pedigree, with his experience, and hopefully he'll finally be in the system that allows him to throw the ball and, you know, you're 
couple years ago, just let Russ cook and is Russ burning up the food. He's going to have a ton of input on this game plan, this offensive system, what they do and what they don't do. I believe we're going to see the best of Russell Wilson because in Seattle with Pete Carroll, Pete Carroll wants to run the ball. He wants to uh, play great defense and kind of limit the mistakes that Russell Wilson can make. But those mistakes that he did make always had Russell Wilson playing from behind. Mm. Now we can probably try to reverse that. I, I'm surprised that we all have three different answers here. I thought Russell Wilson was a clear-cut biggest uh, mm. off-season impact. Welcome to TV. All right, let me I'm hear really, look, I'm really surprised. No, no, no. I'm, I'm surprised because, like, maybe it's Monday. We all had great weekends because everyone is playing so nice. So let me put on my hating gloves on Let's and go. go at both of you guys. So now, TJ, we're going to talk about Russell Wilson. And Russell Wilson, as we've talked about, he burned up the food in the kitchen in Seattle the last two years. Mm. Now he goes to a Denver team that I would say they have a lesser wide receiver core than the one that he inherits in Denver. Mm -hmm. You have a new head coach in Nathaniel Hackett. You mm -hmm. have an offensive line. We can talk about Seattle's offensive line being shaky, but this Denver Bronco offensive line is certainly not an A-plus offensive line. And then when we examine Russell Wilson and the way that he's played the last couple of years, I'm not confident that Russ can put a whole team on his back. So you basically you, 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 you basically saying that you don't think Russell Wilson is all that good. Basically, that's what you're saying. <laughs> I would say that I think Russ is either the third or fourth best quarterback in that division. So he, he and basically so he in the basement. Even if the team is better, uh, yes, he is. Because I don't think if I don't think he's better than Patrick Mahomes. Mm. I don't think he's better than Justin Herbert. Mm. And then we can debate whether he's better than Derek Carr in terms of his impact and what he has around him to perform. So they may be a better team and still finish 6-11, and 7-10. and 10. It's going to be hard for them to win games in their division. And then the thing is, in Cleveland, the cloud is over the city because we don't know what's going to happen to Deshaun Watson. We don't know if he's going to be able to play. I love him as a player, but we don't know if he's available. And even if he is available, how does he play with the cloud of all that other stuff? See, because... The last time we saw him on the field, he didn't have all this stuff hanging over his head. I don't know if he can channel the Mamba mentality and mm. play at a high level while dealing with all of this other stuff. So there's a lot of uncertainty. To me, my guy is easy to pick. Hey, Bucky, you know what's crazy? As you're sitting here talking, I'm sitting here thinking, you said third or fourth best quarterback in the division. We argue we can say that about... Each of the guys we've selected. Chill. You might say that about Watson well, in his division. Chill, chill. You might say that Where about Matt that? Ryan in his what, what, division. What, 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 maybe, whoa, maybe, whoa, Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan you better stay out of mine. He's the best in my division. <laughs> yeah, clearly let's go. the best in, in the division. He's bad. Matt you're, Ryan you're, is clearly. He Ryan better than Tannehill, Ryan Tannehill right Trevor now? Oh, yeah. Lawrence. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They tried. They, Come on, well, stop playing. Hey, Matt Ryan can play, but you got to understand, he's the player. Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Julio, Kyle man. Pitts. I mean, he done played with some dogs his entire career. I'm yeah. just saying. I mean, there's not a great quarterback that hasn't played with great pass catchers. Like, you got to <laughs> throw the ball and have somebody that can catch it. Like, that's you. part of the deal. And so, I, I worry about that. And that is why, to bring me back to Russell Wilson, they have good receivers. I don't know if they have great receivers in Denver. Yeah, let's talk about this. Uh, I got my hater gloves on, too. You just can't see them. Uh, they're the same color as I. Here we go. Denver had seven wins last year. He acting like they were, like, super sorry. Cleveland had eight wins last year, two losing teams. And then Bucky sitting there, like, talking about impact. Y'all the only winning team. Y'all the only team that had nine wins, right? So in terms of greatest impact, well, you're talking about a team that already had a winning record, so be careful how much impact you're going to have in terms of the quarterback play. That's an advantage to TJ. That's an advantage to me. Let me tell you why it's even a greater advantage to me, because TJ keeps talking about this drought. Oh, they ain't been to the playoffs in, what, seven years? What'd you say, TJ? Last six time, seasons. Six seasons, right? They went to the Super Bowl and they ain't been back to the playoffs since. Well, the Cleveland Browns only been to the playoffs <laughs> one time in the last 19 years. Don't let that one anomaly year from Baker Mayfield fool you. Rest of these years, it's been dry. So you talk about impact. Deshaun Watson comes in the building. Baker Mayfield is no longer your franchise quarterback. That's how you have impact. I'm looking at Seattle version of Russell Wilson with the injury to his hand and the great receiving core, but injuries to the offensive line and to the running game, whatever you want to say about it, now he lands in the toughest division in football. What a first-year head coach on a team that was a losing team. How much impact will Russell Wilson have? Huh. 
yet to be seen. But when you talk about Deshaun Watson and what he has to compartmentalize in terms of his personal issues, you know that the football field becomes your solace when you got issues in your life. You know the basketball court, whatever sport you're playing, that's your safe haven. That's where you go and you say, now all I got to do is focus in on ball. It protects you, not just the helmet you're wearing, but protects you from those issues that are being presented in the real world. To me, I thought you guys overthought this one. It was real simple. NFL.com got it right, too. I'm with them. Deshaun Watson to the Cleveland Browns? The Browns? The one Playoff appearing Browns in 19 years. Bucky, put those gloves back on. Swing at me, big dog, if you got something. Dog, I got plenty of stuff. So here's the thing. Oh. I do believe if it was clean and we knew for sure that he's going to play every game this year, mm -hmm. absolutely he's okay. an impactful player. Okay. But we don't know. And I think the uncertainty means that we can't say he's the most impactful guy. Look, he's a tremendous upgrade over Baker Mayfield. Like, there's no disputing that when it Thanks. comes to player for player. However availability is a huge factor in this because if he's unavailable, now you're talking about Jacoby Brissett or mm. Josh Dobbs being able to do it. And I don't believe that those guys make the Cleveland Browns better. Yes, in the locker room, I believe any of those guys is a better leader in terms of their ability to relate to their players and teammates and those things. Deshaun Watson has all of that. I just worry about him maybe missing four, six, eight games. How does he come back in the middle of the year? How does that impact the team that has to play without a guy that they clearly see is an upgrade, but they're not able to have him each and every week?